Ready when you are. Okay. So, when we're talking about these grassland birds, there's something you should think about, and that is, if I were here a couple hundred years ago, this would not have been a grassland. This would have been a forest. And much of southern Ontario was forested. So, bobolinks and meadowlarks were probably quite a bit scarcer prior to land clearing. And when the forests were cleared 150, 100 years ago, these two species boomed because there were fields everywhere. When pesticides were brought in at the end of the Second World War, uh, it allowed farmers to get the same amount of material off less land, and a great many fields were let go and abandoned. And that created perfect habitat for bobolinks and meadowlarks. And they may have reached their peak at that time when there was all these grass fields. Most of those fields now, though, have through succession turned into forests, or at least dense shrubs, which is not suitable for either species. Now, historically speaking, both of these birds, the core range was to the west of us, probably in, in the U.S. Midwest. Uh, but with the land clearing here, they, they expanded east in numbers. Now, present day, that core historic range is no longer suitable. It's intense agriculture, mostly corn. And, and there are, the bird, the, those species are quite scarce there now. Conversely, we have kind of taken on the role of being core range for these species through the modifications in habitat made with the forest clearing. And so today, uh, these species, Ontario is quite an important part of their range. We have, I believe it's something like 30 to 40 percent of the world's bobolinks in Ontario now. Mm. So we have a fair responsibility, kind of by default, uh, for the well-being of this species. Now I mentioned um, uh, Eastern Meadowlark. Uh, it's called Eastern because it has a counterpart called Western Meadowlark. Western Meadowlark is in the prairies and, and just edges into Ontario around Lake of the Woods and the Rainy River area. Um, and eastern meadowlark doesn't penetrate into the Great Plains. And the two species meet but do not hybridize. So they're, they're good species. They have very different songs as well. The, um, the western meadowlark has an explosive, bubbly musical song, quite different than the, the sort of whiny, uh, whiny in a good way, whiny song of the eastern meadowlark. Um, now, I want to just talk a bit about the history thing again. Um, we've seen a big decline in meadowlarks and bobolinks in southern Ontario in the last couple decades. And I, I think a great deal of that has to do with the succession of habitat. And again, looking at this field that we're in right now, 25 years ago this would have been great for both species. But much of this field has moved past the useful habitat range, certainly for bobolink, and it's probably getting a little dicey for meadowlark. I wouldn't be surprised if meadowlarks could still be in this field. I'd be a little surprised if bobolinks are um, just because there's such a, a relatively limited area of this nice grassy stuff, which I'm standing in right now. Um, and this is, the, this is sort of a microcosm of the problem. Uh, old fields, most of the old fields that were suitable are growing up. The other thing is that many people, when they see an old field, they see it as wasteland. It's not doing anything. And so they'll plant rows of pine trees or rows of spruce trees. And, and that'll finish it for any grassland bird. Um, and I, I think that's a, an education hurdle that conservationists need to work on, is, is explaining to folks that these fields can be quite useful as fields. This is not only habitat for meadowlark bobolink, it's habitat for savanna sparrows, grasshopper sparrows, eastern bluebirds, a whole suite of birds that, that exist because of the grasslands. And, uh, and as I mentioned, Ontario does have natural native grasslands, uh, prairies. Uh, much of extreme southwestern Ontario was a prairie until around the turn of the century when it was all drained off and converted to agriculture, and it's now our most, our, our most prized agricultural land. Um, and there were lots of grasslands on the south side of Rice Lake, uh, more in central, south central Ontario. Um, and undoubtedly these species were there at that time. But, but again, they boomed with the forest clearing, and now we're seeing kind of a decline. I think most of it is really closely related to habitat. Unlike, for example, barn swallow, where the habitat's there, but the birds aren't. And that may be a food failure problem. Here, I think it's a more simple solution. It's a habitat issue. And, and having said that, 
you know, there's a, a bit of conflict between um, agriculture and these birds and what to do about it. Bobolinks, for example, good example, they nest in hay fields. We cut our hay fields. We've been using hay, over the years, we've, we've modified hay so that it matures more quickly. And, and at some point in this process, we kind of failed, um, we truncated it so much, the growing season, that from the time a bobolink arrives, starts to breed, and fledges its young, the hay will be cut. And we lose most of our nesting bobolinks in hay fields because the fields are cut before the young fledge, and, and they are killed by the harvesting process. So various, uh, various people are working on this now, trying to figure out if there's a way to tweak it so that we could dovetail the nest season into the hay season without c cutting them short, literally, at the hind end, at the back end. Um, grasslands are fairly easy to manage and maintain as grasslands. Uh, burning is a common technique, which can help knock down the shrubby growth and, and sort of reinvigorate the grass component. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of hopeful that these species, we will be able to do positive things for these birds because, in a way, the, the solution is fairly simple. It's just ensuring that we maintain enough grassland to support viable populations. And, and that can be worked into agricultural processes. Uh, it can also occur outside of agricultural lands where we have uh, vast uh, uh, grassland habitats like the Cardin Alvar and the Napanee Plain two areas that are well known for having high, high quality grassland habitat and all the species that go with that. Excellent. Got it.